Um, my name is Dave Warren, and I'm the Chemistry. Um, what I want to talk about today is it, it, a lot of this stuff that's been coming out today about this discrepancy between NCEA and what we're doing in first year, particularly in chemistry, because we're a chemistry department. We're, we're seeing a change in skills that they're bringing through. We're not talking about the knowledge, we're not talking about anything like that. We're actually seeing a change in the skills. Um, and part of this has been the outreach program we've run, like a lot of the high school teachers here. Now, we've, we've been taking high schools in two days doing their investigations and basically having them in the labs and watching those skills that those students have got. They're definitely skills that we wouldn't recognise in some of our first year students ten years ago. You know, I, I remember Alan coming around last year looking at what we've been doing. And, wow, this, why aren't we doing this in first year? So this, is, this, this really has been an, a, a, an attempt to try and build on those skills that they're bringing through um, and addressing the problems John was talking about, about making the chemistry more relevant, more interesting, more stimulating, um, and trying to build that sort of excitement in the chemistry department. It's all to do with the Chem 111 course, which Dave outlined before. Um, we don't have a huge amount of t things we can do with the Chem 191 course because of the numbers, and also because it's a prerequisite for the, bio for the, for the professionals courses. 111, though, is our course. We like to feel we own it. We can play with it. We can do what we want with it. Um, Okay, so I'll give you an outline. I'll, I'll, Dave's already outlined one one one, so I'll skip over this a little bit. I'll, I'll, but I'll show you what the old court, the old lab course consisted of, and then I'll go over to, to, to what we did change and how we changed it. We left some things the same, but we changed some things. And um, we brought in these new assessment procedures. We, we, previously, I've been a phys chem teaching fellow, working a lot with second and third year students. And my the first thing I do in two hundred one is spend about six weeks teaching kids how to write lab reports. As these guys back here will tell you. It's, it's a nightmare thing. You basically have to run tutorials to teach them to write lab reports. And it seemed to us that if we had a chemistry paper, maybe that's something that we should be putting into the first year. How could we do it and what could we do? So that was, that was one driving force behind doing this. 111 also suffered from, um, as you'll see, some traditional, traditional courses, labs, and we wanted to bring in something that was a bit more exciting, a bit more relevant. And these are the two we did. I'll give you a bit of feedback about what students actually thought about it. It's, it's not as quantitative as, as, as Tony's stuff. Basically, a very simple questionnaire. Like, what's your favourite lab? What's your least favourite lab? And a few comments. Um, so it's not really very, very numerical, but it gives, very, gives some very good insights into it. And also about what they thought about assessments, which is very interesting. And I'll give you some conclusions on maybe where we're going to take this stuff in the future in the department. So really, really what sort of skills are we talking about? Well, some of these are not just what we're seeing in the labs. This is some of the things that we've seen in the average programme that we've been but I think it would be fair to say in one in the first year now, the practical skills are much, much better than they were five years ago. I think we can, we can without a doubt. You know, instead of standing there saying we're going to do a titration and seeing this blank to see faces, what the hell is that? We actually now have students that have done three, four, five, six, ten titrations in labs during, during the, the sixth and seventh form year, level two, year level three courses. They've got better rest investigative skills. They're much better at sort of working out what they're supposed to be doing. They ask as Tony said, insightful questions. They're not just doing things for the sake of doing it, they're actually thinking about what they're doing. They work independently, much better independently. They don't, they don't have to be fed through. They can, they can give them a set of things and they work their way through it. They have a problem, they can work on it, and then they'll come to see you rather than just say, sir, what's it? So, and, and they're very good at prioritising, which is something that's more come out, not so much from the first year course, but from what I've worked with the second year, third year students, and seeing what they've come through with. And again, this outreach thing we've been running. So what are we trying to do? Well, <coughs> We wanted to make some labs that were more than just what I call recipes. Do this, do this, do this, make this crystal, operate, throw it away, start the next one. We wanted to do something a bit more than just making things and doing things for the sake of doing them. Try to put some of the investigative skills that they pick up at NCA. I mean, I'm aware that not all schools do investigations, the 3.1 investigations. I think, personally, that's a huge negative for the students that come through those schools. I think it's something that all schools should be doing as much as they can. So we're trying to put some investigative skills in there. We're, we're limited in the um, the time thing. You know, we, we can't do open-ended investigations like, like it would be in the perfect world. But we're trying to put something in there that's a bit less prescriptive, give the students a little bit of choice, let them prioritise what they're going to do, try and get rid of some of these exit tests, which to me, are, are, there's a reason for doing them in 191, because you've got 1,600 students, you can't mark lab reports. But if you've got 120 students, surely you can give them a little bit more time and just tick the things in there, it's not going to be wrong. So we wanted to get rid of the exit tests or at least minimise them. And again, teaching lab reports, teaching skills, uh, writing skills, so that they can, in second year, they, they can start 
learning about the labs and writing the labs and actually picking up the depth of knowledge that the lab reports are designed to pull out to students about what the labs are rather than just learning some basic lab writing skills. Um, and that would also free a bit of time up in the second year so they can actually do some more interesting labs as well and spend time doing some of the exercises we do. And create experiences, and this is something that John was talking about this morning, that are relevant and current and modern. That students can actually see, hey, that's stuff that I can actually see out there being done now. And there was a very interesting little talk um, I had. It, it, I went to a conference in Sydney not long ago. And Flinders University brought in a nanotechnology degree. Started it, well, lots of people doing it, but all of a sudden the students started realising there wasn't actually a career in nanotechnology, it was a bit too early. So all the numbers died off, and all of a sudden at least self-cleaning fibres started coming out and the, and the self-cleaning glass started coming out and the numbers went back up again. The students actually look at your course and say that's what I can do because that's where this knowledge will take me. It gives me a career. If they don't see that or they don't see the relevance, they're not going to do it. It's, 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 it's a reality of the modern world. Um, a very quickly over, overview of 111. Five modules as days explained. The interesting thing on there is the labs were recipe based. They followed instructions. Do this, do that. Finished. Three out of the nine labs were computer-based exercises in a very luxurious little computer suite we've got at the back of the first year labs, um, and they weren't much fun. And they were always, every, every lab was assessed with a 10 minute exit test, and they were all marked out of six. The old lab course, the old lab course consisted of these labs. We started with a systematic nomenclature, that was a computer lab. So we started, they came in, first, first, first chemistry lab, and we sat on a computer naming organic molecules, which is very important to organic chemists, but you know, the students really would see it as a lab. And we gave an exit test. They then did Boyle's law, uh, measured the length of a mercury column, and did some calculations, and we gave an exit test. The third week in, we gave them some chemicals. This is a chemistry test. We then did some intro, and you can see all of the exit tests, all the way exit tests. We did a really, rev really rev revolutionary thing here. We gave a two-week lab, and we gave them a lab report. Except it wasn't really a lab report, it was more a case of there's, there's a template, fill it in, we'll give you some guidance, but we really didn't have the chance to give them any feedback, and the feedback in, in, in education is really important. If you have a bunch of students and you just throw stuff out to them and say, go away and do it, you're not going to get that response that you want from the students. You have to give them feedback and say, you need to improve, you need to do this, and that never gave that opportunity because it was a one-off. Then we went back to a lab, more computer, two weeks of computer labs, and we finished with the Colorado lab. Assessment was best at five exit tests. And the report that was compulsory component. So we gave him one chance to do a report, and that was going to be counted, that had to count. So what we did was we, 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 we looked at the lab course and said, okay, we've got to keep some things the same. We're not going to throw the, the whole thing out of the kitchen, you know, the, the baby out with the bathwater. We have to keep some things the same. We have to have some sort of comparison. So we kept the boils all out, except now instead of doing an exit test, they had to students had to go away and write. Well, it wasn't compulsory, they had the chance to write an abstract about that lab. And we gave them some guidance about what sort of things go in an abstract. They went away. Probably about 50% of them came back and, get, and we got, we get, they got some feedback. That was the important thing. They got feedback about what they did as an abstract. Was it suitable to be an abstract? The next lab they came in, they did exactly the same lab as they'd done before. They wrote an abstract about that lab that was then going to be marked and they went away to write a practice experimental section and got feedback the next time they came in. So we're starting to feed in these skills. Rather than give them a whole lab report to do in one go, we fed it to them in little bits, abstract, experimental results, discussion. And as you can see, it builds up through the labs until this one here, where they do a full lab report. And that's marked out of nine. Everything else is marked out of three. That was marked out of nine, because it's a full lab report. Of course, some problems. There's some very interesting comments about that lab that I'll show you later on. But, um, it, it, was, it was a very good exercise, and the students see it as a really good thing to do, as I'll show you in a little while. Then we went back to, a couple of, we went back to the computer exit test, partly because if you're marking lab reports this late in the semester, you've got to get the marks back to them before the exams. It gets a bit, a bit long-winded. You know, you need time to mark these full lab reports, even for 122 students, as opposed to 1,600. So we had to have a bit of time to mark the lab reports, and we couldn't really do a lab report here because the exams start a week after whatever it is. Okay, so you have to, these were seen as a, a nice finishing point. So, the new lab, of course. The new labs we brought in. We brought in these new labs for various reasons. But one of them we brought in was conducting polymers. The obvious tie-up is Alan Diamond. He's a Nobel Prize winner. He's a New Zealand Nobel Prize winner. Um, I, I've listened to um, Harry Croto talking. He's got this big thing about 
science heroes. There are no science heroes in, in society. There are sports heroes, there are musicians, there are actors. There are no science heroes.